Bienvenidos, Ushamdi, and welcome CTS 131, Section 875 students for the Spring 2018 semester at Anne Arundel Community College. This is the Cisco Networking Academy Routing and Switching Essentials Version 6 course, and this morning's Packet Tracer Tutorial and Solution Set is going to be on one of our optional activities for the week. It's Packet Tracer 6.3.3.8. And it's similar to the Skills Integration Challenge, but this is, again, another inter-VLAN routing challenge. And you can tell from the importance that we're placing on inter-VLAN routing over the last few weeks that this is definitely a core topic and something that you should have down in your routing and switching skill set or your routing and switching toolbox. So let's dive in here and take a look at the topology that we're dealing with. Again, similar to what we saw earlier, a little less complex. However, we have three hosts in three different VLANs. We have the link between the router and the switch. And then we've got our HQ and it's sort of out to the internet here, right? Okay, or maybe this is a server uh, on our internal LAN. So let's go ahead and dive in. We're gonna assign IP addressing to router one and switch one based on the routing table. And so you can see here a little different, we've got a management SVI that it looks like we're going to be creating for switch one. And here's the information we'll need for that. So let's take care of router one first, right? Let's get our sub interfaces taken care of. So let's go to the CLI here where we're in user exec mode. Enable puts me into privilege exec and I do configure terminal or conf T to get into global config. Now, as you can see, again, we have one, two, three, four, five sub interfaces that we're going to be configuring. So if I go into interface gigabit ethernet 00.10, I can go ahead and put my IP addressing on here, right? And what's going to happen? 172.17.10.1. And this is a slash 24. So 255, 255, 255, 0. Again, we see the same thing we saw in the previous activity, where the where iOS on the router is going to say, I see that you're trying to create a sub-interface here, right? You're trying to create a virtual interface on this physical interface, gig 0, zero. However, if you're creating virtual interfaces, I need some method to tell me when the traffic shows up, how am I to differentiate the traffic for each of the sub-interfaces? And so our choice is going to be that IEEE 802.1Q, right, the VLAN tag. And so the first thing I need to do is say incap.1Q10. Now remember, the sub-interface does not need to match the incap.1Q number. However, the incap.1Q number does need to match the VLAN number. So if it's VLAN 10, it's incap.1q10. If it's VLAN 20, it's incap.1q20. Now we can come back and put our IP address on here without any issues at all. So now let's go into gig zero. And you know what? I just realized that I did that on the wrong interface. So I was thinking we were the same. So let's do this. I wonder if this command works here on default interface. Gigabit zero, zero, and it doesn't. So let's see here. I'm going to say um, interface gigabit zero, zero, no interface gig zero, 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 zero dot 10. All right, do show IP interface brief. All right, yeah, so I created a sub interface there on gig zero, zero. It's supposed to be gig zero, one. So threw me off, right? And that happens sometimes. So let's go into gig zero, zero, one dot 10. We're going to say incap dot one Q 10. And then I'm going to recall that IP address command, which it's still there. And we're good to go. So now we're back on track. So gig zero, one dot 20 is going to be incap dot one Q 20. And then the IP address is an easy fix here. We just change that third octet to 20. Then I go into gig 01 dot 30. Let me double check that, dot 30. So we've got incap dot 1q 30, and we'll recall the IP address command and just change that third octet to 30. And then we go into interface gig 01 dot 88, incap dot 1q 88, and then we pull our IP address back up here. And then we go into interface gigabit ethernet 01.99, 
and it's going to be incap.1q99, and then we need the IP is going to be 99.1. All right, so now when I say do show IP interface brief, we should see that we've got the 10, 20, 30, 88, and 99 all under the correct parent interface. Uh, and let me make sure that's it. And so they're all administratively down. So how do we resolve that? Well, we're going to go into interface gigabit ethernet 01, and we're going to say no shut. And that's going to bring not only the parent interface up, but also the child or sub interfaces as well. And so we're done on the router side, and now we're gonna take care of the switch side of the equation because we need to create an SVI for the management VLAN, which is gonna be VLAN 99. So let's go to the command line interface. Now we're in user exec mode, enable puts us in privilege exec, and let's get into global config. Now remember, we're creating a switched virtual interface. So this is a layer three virtual interface that we're gonna be creating here on switch one. So what I'm uh, not gonna do is I'm not gonna say VLAN 99. That's not what I need to do here. Remember, I'm creating a virtual interface VLAN 99, a virtual switched interface, right? So I would say interface VLAN 99. We're going to say no shut. I'm going to say IP address is going to be 172.17.99.10. And it is a slash 24. I could even put a quick description on here. Management SVI. Right? Maybe put my initials so that someone knows when or who created it, and then 0321-2018, and they know when. All right, so that should take care of the IP addressing on the switch and the router. Now, my question, and we'll see if we need an IP default gateway. My guess is that there's going to be a default gateway needed here on the switch. And let's say do show run. I don't think it's configured. And so for management traffic right now, yeah, I'm almost positive we're going to need the IP default gateway. So I'm going to do that right now. And again, remember, we're talking about management traffic, control plane or management plane traffic. So if I ping from the switch or if I SSH from the switch, the switch is just like a host in that sense, is that that traffic, it's not transiting through the switch. And again, remember, we're defining transiting as it ingresses or enters the switch on one interface and then exit the switch and exits the switch on another interface. That is transit. It is transiting through the switch. This is not transit traffic. This is traffic originating being created on the switch. And just like a PC needs to know what is my default gateway, so too does the switch. So I'm gonna say IP default gateway. And again, for the management plane traffic here, which is VLAN 99, my default gateway would be 172.17.99.1. And we're at 65 out of 100 right now. I would be shocked if we do not get points for this. I'm pretty sure they're gonna be looking for this to be added in. And yes, four points for that one. So we definitely need to remember that default gateway. All right. So we need to create name and assign VLANs on switch one. All right. So we're going to be doing some VLAN creation here as well and port assignments table. Okay. So we are going to be typing. I thought it might have, these may have existed based off of what we just did in the previous activity, but they do not. So I need to say VLAN 10, name, faculty, staff, VLAN 20, the name is students, VLAN 30, the name is guest, and we'll say default, and then VLAN 88, now this is going to be our native VLAN for our trunk port, and actually, what do we now need to do? So there's something that's going to be missing. I'm going to walk it all the way through, and you think about what it is now that I've just said VLAN 88 name native. VLAN 99 name is going to be management. All right. So do show VLAN brief. Let's see what we've got here, and let's do this. Let's give ourselves 
a little more room with which to work. All right. And Okay, so we've got VLAN 10, 20, 30, 88, and 99, the five VLANs that we're working with. So we're set there. So create, name, and assign VLANs based on the port assignment. So now we need to get into the ports. So I'm going to say interface range, fast Ethernet 0, 11 to 17. I'm going to say switch port mode access. We're going to say switch port access VLAN. So we're assigning the VLAN 10. And I'm also going to say spanning tree port fast. Now there's probably no points uh, gonna, that are going to be awarded for the port fast. I'm doing this for our own benefit here uh, to make sure that if we have to do anything with the hosts that we are covered and that the ports come up, they skip the listening and the learning states in spanning tree and they transition immediately to the forwarding state. All right, so interface range, fast Ethernet 0, 18 to 24. So switch port mode access. Switch port access VLAN 20. Spanning tree port fast. All right, now we've got interface range fast Ethernet 06 to 10. And we're going to say, oh, not spanning tree yet. So we'll say switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 30. Is that right? VLAN 30. Uh, and then we'll say spanning tree port fast. I could also say spanning tree BPDU guard enable, right? And we'll get to that when we get to the spanning tree toolkit. But this is making sure that a switch doesn't get plugged into this port. And if it does, that the port's going to shut down. All right, so that should take care of all the VLAN assignments. And you can see we're at 99 out of 100 here. And maybe they aren't going, and actually it does ask, configure the default gateway on switch one, right? But remember, this is a different default gateway than when we do it on a router. That was the IP default gateway statement. Um, all ports not assigned to a VLAN should be disabled. So let's do that. All ports not assigned to a VLAN do show uh, VLAN brief. So what port is not assigned to a VLAN? Well, it looks like it's going to be these guys right here. Let's make sure 6 to 10. Yeah, so it looks like it's going to be those guys. So let's say this. Let's say interface range, fast Ethernet, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, comma, gigabit Ethernet, 0, 2, because 0, 1 is going to be our trunk link. And I'm going to say shut. I don't think we're going to get points for that, and we probably shouldn't. So no, no points for that. Uh, and let's see. We've got the default gate. Well, we're still missing a point. I th I'm pretty sure I know what this point's going to be. So let's say interface gigabit Ethernet 01, right? If I say do show run, remember the trunk port on the switch side is still has to be set up. And here's gig 01. So let's dive in there. I think I did. Gig 01. And we're going to say switch port mode trunk, and I could say switch port or SWMT, same thing, switch port mode trunk. I'm going to say switch port trunk native VLAN is 88. Native VLAN is 88. And then we're going to say uh, switch port no negotiate, right? Because we don't want it to run DTP. And interesting, we are at 100 out of 100 here. But what is not right? Something got overlooked. Can you figure out what it is? And so the trunk link is done. Let me do a write mem here and save my config. And let's come back to router one. And this is where the mistake is at. And I'll drill down here. And if you watch the previous video, you probably know I actually pointed it out because this is something that I always overlook for whatever reason. And for this time, it was because it just occurred uh, later down in the VLAN table where I saw it, right? And what is that? So here's the mistake. And so I'm kind of surprised with 01.88. And I need to say incap.1q88 what? Native. Because 88 is our native VLAN. All right. So we're at 100 out of 100. The inner VLAN routing has already been done. Verify connectivity R1, switch 1, and all PCs should be able to ping each other and the Cisco PKA server. So let's try the Cisco PKA server first. And you'll notice we had no static routes that we had to do here. 
right? That was all sort of done for us. So 172.17.50.254. And I'm sure right now that uh, we've got an art packet flying around somewhere and the request is gonna time out. And let's see what happens here. And this is coming off of VLAN 30. All right, and the requests are timing out. So this is interesting, did I get this right? 172.17.50.0, did I, is there a default route that I missed that is asking? All right, so can I ping my default gateway? So let's see if I can ping 172.17. So we got some troubleshooting here, which is always fun. All right, so I can get to my default gateway. My default gateway is router one. So let's come to router one. And I was making an assumption that we had maybe a static route in here already. And we do, and it says it's directly connected to gig 01. So now it gets interesting. So what if I was to say trace route to the 172.17, and let's just pull this back up, we'll change ping. Trace route 172.17, I'm sorry, not trace route, trace RT, sorry about that. And let's see to where we get. Okay, so we get to the host, but it doesn't make it back. Okay, that's interesting. Let's try to ping it again. <laughs> okay, so maybe a packet tracer bug. Maybe I didn't wait long enough. So, But we do have connectivity. And again, I was assuming that this was here, and it is here. We do have that static default route. All right, so everything looks good there from the perspective of PC3. Let's check PC2 here. Pull this down so I can get that IP address again. And let's ping 172.17.50.254. And hopefully we are not going to see a bunch of failures. All right, there we go, good. So we're working on PC1, I'm sorry, we were doing PC1, and then let's try PC3 last but not least. And let's say ping 172.17 dot 50 dot 254 and this should work like a champ we shouldn't have any problems and there we go all right well this is going to wrap up sort of one of our supplemental optional activities for the week and that is packet tracer activity 6.3.3.8 where we were taking a look at the inter vlan routing challenge activity so again remember that incap.1q command needs to go on the subinterface before the IP address does. The incap.1q number needs to match the VLAN number, but those do not need to match the subinterface number in order to work, right? All right, well, that is it for inter VLAN routing. Thanks so much for watching. Enjoy the snow day, and I will talk with you guys soon.